Now I am going through and deep decluttering our house, my life, honestly, from inside and out. And I've been sharing the whole process with you all here. And what really has amazed me as we are loading up now, we've got two huge contractor bags full of stuff, just stuff that literally we did not need. It was just junking up our house. My husband, big strong guy, had to literally like heave it out to the car because it was so full. And the weight of our clutter, it was just so apparent there before us as we packed the back of our SUV full of this stuff. And the more I thought about it, the more I said, man, there is a weight to clutter that I don't think we even realize and it's a lot heavier than those big full contractor bags. Hey there friends, I'm Heidi, the Heavenly Minded Homemaker and something about simple living, um, minimalism, essentialism, whatever term you want to give it, I like simple and I think simplicity is key time and time again. I know I've shared here on YouTube for over six years now and I find so often in life, be it my, my homemaking, our homeschool, the homestead, just life in general, that when the clutter starts to pack on, it really does make such an impact, such a weight that you really start to take on and carry and I think it's become so normalized now to have such excess that we don't realize that that's where the problem is. That's where the root is that needs to be addressed. And so I hope that this can be an encouragement to you here today. I've been sharing a series all month how I am, I was fed up. I couldn't take it anymore. I'm taking spring cleaning to a deeper level and resetting my entire life inside and out this month. And so I'll be sure to link that playlist at the end. I have details down below if you're like, yes, me too. And you want to come join me. I've got resources and more. It's all down there. If it can be a blessing to you in your home but I wanted to share this today and I've been tackling my home literally going from room to room deep minimizing deep cleaning only putting back the essentials and dealing with the clutter and so I am tackling our hallway today so I'm going to kind of play that as we talk through these four very important ways that clutter is just a heavy weight a heavy burden that's hanging on us and maybe we didn't realize that the root of these issues really is the clutter. Clutter muddles our focus. Remember the story of Mary and Martha? While Martha was distracted by all the preparations, Mary chose to focus on Jesus. Sometimes our homes feel like Martha's kitchen, full of distractions. Clutter pulls our attention away from what truly matters. It's hard to focus on our blessings, our family, and God's word when we're stumbling over toys or searching through drawers for missing keys. It really is crazy how much clutter affects our focus. I don't know, I'm very neurodivergent. So ADHD over here, working from home, homeschooling, homesteading, right? All of the things. When I have something I need to focus on and get done in my house is just everywhere I look, there's things that need my attention. I saw a reel last night, my husband sent it to me and it was like, ADHD years when you don't know what to do and it was a scene from Friends where Phoebe is like at the crazy dress shop and she's like jumping back and forth I'm not recommending it but you know like jumping back and forth and didn't know where to go what to do but that was like what ADHD feels like right when you're like fold the laundry oh I have to go to the bathroom oh I still need to make dinner oh the kids need this and when there is just stuff everywhere it's like everywhere you look there's an unfinished project everywhere you look there's something you need to get to everywhere you look right and you're just it's so hard to focus on what you need and I feel like so often we end up just spinning our wheels spinning our wheels spinning our wheels and then at the end of the day we feel like we haven't actually accomplished anything so we're exhausted we're worn out we've done so many things whether we're balancing homeschooling work you know life ministry whatever it might be that we have going on and yet we feel like we've gone full throttle all day and yet we have nothing to show for it because everywhere we look it's just piles and collections of things that are messy, that are taking up all of that like mental energy and then physical space around us. And 
when we have all those things going on, it can be really, really hard to have any focus when you literally don't know where to look or where to go. It, there's something to be said about you know high-end um, home design and things like that. It is very clean, it's very simple, because there's literal science behind your brains trying to figure out what to focus on. And when there's a ton of stuff, your brain literally doesn't know what to do and how to act. And so that's why, you know, beautiful multi-million dollar homes look the way they do. If you'll notice, they're very simple. There's not a lot of things on the surfaces. There's not a lot of things on the walls. Like there isn't stuff absolutely everywhere because it is overwhelming to our brains. And so when we want to have some focus and intention and completion and fulfillment in our lives, the clutter everywhere really does break that down and make it difficult to focus. Don't worry, not all hope is lost because what can we do about this? Well, honestly, that's why I'm here and sharing with you guys because I was feeling like I couldn't focus. I was feeling overwhelmed by all of the clutter. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna work on this and put it together. And if it can be a blessing for someone else, then praise God, we're going to share it because I think there is something to be said about truly going to the Lord in prayer and saying, Lord, help me to focus. Help me to get through this. I think it's so important to pick one room at a time, one spot at a time. That's why I've been sharing that with you guys. I picked my living room and I've literally been working in like this clockwise rotation through our home and I'm gonna continue through it for the rest of the month, resetting the whole space and really tackling this so that I can declutter my home, everything literally around me, and also those internal things, those heart issues that need some attention as well. And so if any of these things, having a, a simple organization system, a simple cleaning system, routine routines, rhythms, anything like this is an area that you're struggling and you need some help. Again, you guys can come and join us to get all the resources to do the same thing that I'm doing, plus all the other resources that we offer here on our channel to prayerfully be a blessing to other families as well. So that's linked down below and be sure when you subscribe, turn on your little bell notifications so that way you get those updates as they come out. Clutter drains our energy. Just looking at a cluttered space can make us feel tired. It's that overwhelming sense that we should be doing something about the mess, yet where do we even start? Do you guys ever get that overwhelming mom guilt where you just see all the things everywhere that need attention, they need to be dealt with, you've put them on the back burner, they're on your to-do list, only your to-do list is so long, it's literally burying you alive. I've been there too. And I think that's what's so hard because clutter really does drain our energy. There is a weight to the stuff we bring in. And again, I know in our culture today, excess, right? Anytime you watch, you know, HGTV, they're talking about how much storage a home has because we got to store all the stuff. Anywhere you look on Instagram and even YouTube, it's about having all of this, you know, huge inventory of, you know, 8 billion candles, 9 million cups. There's so many pieces. There's a weight to the physical and even mental upkeeping of all the stuff. We're always thinking the things in our head, oh, I need to deal with this, I need to get that. I know when I redid my kitchen, I shared with you guys, we had a shelf in like our like spice and medicine cabinet that was just insane. Like I literally would like walk through the house like this, anytime I had to get something out of that cabinet, it was just that weight of, oh, I haven't gotten to this, this needs to be addressed. There's so much in here, it's so overwhelming. But the thought of having the energy to somehow tackle such a monumental task, it sometimes is just crushing in life and all the things you have going on. It's like, man, can I really afford the time and effort and energy to tackle all of this clutter? But I genuinely do believe that we're asking the wrong question. The true question is, can we really afford the weight the mental and physical overload that is continuing on in all the clutter. Again, friends, I promise you this is meant to be an encouragement because we're gonna look at the root of the problem, but then we're gonna look at some ways that we can address it. And I think sometimes, especially when your house is really cluttered, there is so much going on. The thought of even how can I physically get through this is so scary and feels so heavy. 
but something as simple as taking a timer and setting it for five, 10, 15 minutes and saying, you know what, for these 15 minutes, I'm gonna work on this cabinet, I'm gonna work on this room, I'm going to whatever. Those little bits, now it might take you a whole week of 15 minute increments, right? You might dedicate an entire weekend to y'all, we're doing nothing else this weekend <laughs> but tackling these things. Maybe it's a weekend where the, you know, the kids, if you have younger ones, they get to go stay at the grandparents for the weekend and you and your husband are like, all right, this is it, right? We're tackling things, whatever you have to do. But setting even small increments of time can cause the biggest ripple effect in a good way of tackling the spaces and moving through. Again, that's why I'm vlogging through the whole process for myself and our family, because I think there's something to be said about seeing someone else do it, seeing a simple system of how to go through the space, how to tackle it and make an impact, because it, the clutter drains our energy. But what's really amazing is how much better you start to feel once you start tackling that mountain of clutter you start clearing that chaos from your home and really getting that little pat in the back for yourself of, I did it, right? One cabinet's done, one closet's done, one room's done, right? Whatever it is. And it almost just, you know, encourages you more and more and more. Like you just can't stop. All right, I did that one. I'm so tired, but I'm finishing this one now, right? Because you're reaping those rewards and it's making an impact in your life and understanding that this isn't something that you just do once and you never have to do it ever again, but you almost look forward to those times when you do go through it because once you've done it before, you know the rewards you're going to get from having a decluttered space and how much better that genuinely makes you and everyone else feel in the space. Clutter can make us feel guilty. It can be a visual reminder of tasks undone and that can make us feel guilty. There's that craft project you meant to finish or the clothes meant to be donated. These all remind us of what we haven't accomplished. Now I know we already touched on it a little bit, but I want to reiterate here this area of guilt. Clutter really does bring that on. And I think so often we don't realize that that's the root of our problem. We go through seeing others that we think are doing so much better than us, right? Maybe it's, you know, someone's house you have a play date at or someone that you know, or you just watch online or whatever. And you go, man, you know, they clearly, I'm doing something wrong. They have it so together and I don't. I think the, the clutter factor is so much deeper than anyone is really standing up and acknowledging. But that feeling of guilt leads into so much. We're guilty, so then we're frustrated because we feel like, man, you know, I feel guilty because look at their stuff everywhere, all these things I didn't get to, and I'm so tired, right, because it zapped all my energy, right? All these things just feed into one another, and then you start going, okay, um, maybe some resentment starts sneaking in because you go, well, if only my husband would do this for me, he should know how tired I am. If only the kids were doing this, if only this was that, right? We start playing into all these different areas and then we're feeding this monster within us. We start thinking about all the discontent in our lives. Well, maybe the stuff isn't the problem. Maybe it's because I don't have a new house. I don't have the right organizational system. I don't have the right products. We watch these endless reels. I know I'm guilty of it too, where you go through and restock my fridge with me like redo my pantry redo all this stuff and it looks wonderful it's beautiful I go man okay well that's the problem if I just had you know three thousand dollars worth of pretty acrylic containers then all of the stuff would just magically be so much better we're not realizing that it's the sheer amount the excess the clutter that we don't need that we're trying to process and keep up with I think understanding why we have that guilt why that beast inside of us is just going crazy and all of this just overwhelm and frustration is really, really important because there's a lot we can do to help this. I know it can feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. We can set small achievable goals. 
we can make it part of our daily rhythm to have at least a few actionable steps that we can work towards. There's many things we can do to truly reset our space and even more that we can do to maintain it. And again, I'm telling you, once you receive the benefit of those weights being lifted off of you, when your home is the last stress on your mind because are you serious? It takes me 15 minutes to take this from a tornado went through it I got a lot of kids, a lot of animals, a lot of people going through my house on the daily to picture perfect like it's nothing. This is an area I love sharing about because having these realistic <laughs> rhythms to our day to really just keep our spaces back to ready and feeling good, being able to give us that maximum impact with minimum effort, I think is an amazing thing to have instead of trying to keep up with everything and feeling that guilt of I can't get it all done and I'm doing so bad taking those baby steps one day at a time, right? The Lord gives me grace. I can give myself some grace as well and say, it's okay. I'm working on this. We're improving one step at a time and we will get there. And the more that I see the reward of that, the more I'm encouraged to say, okay, I'm onto something here. I think life is lovely. Life is such a gift that not every single person receives each day. And so I want to make the absolute most out of every day of my life. And I'm sorry, but cleaning all day, being overwhelmed with a messy house, frustrated at everyone and just maxed out is not where I want to be. I want to get out there and I want to enjoy myself and enjoy my life that God has put before me. And so this does matter because this has a huge impact and you can get there with just one step at a time. You've got this, you will get to it. You might be climbing a mountain, but one step at a time will get you to the top. Clutter strains relationships. Ever bumped into a pile of books and snapped at a family member? Clutter isn't just personal, it's communal. Shared spaces mean shared responsibilities and sometimes shared frustrations. I will be incredibly transparent here and say that this is one of my biggest, biggest issues. I know for me that when my kids were young, I come from a family of women who yelled. They're yellers. They just yell all the time. They realize they're yelling. They yell so much. And when my children were, re were really little, I realized that I didn't want to be that mom. I didn't want to do that. And so for me, that was really an intentional thing to say, okay, I'm quitting yelling. I will not yell. If we get to the point that I have now raised my voice, the entire house is looking this direction because that is not something I do often. It takes a lot. But when I really started focusing on not wanting to yell, I really started seeing the root to why I was yelling. The clutter everywhere, those constant feelings of, I don't have enough energy, I'm letting everyone down, the guilt, the frustration, all that that came into it really was such a huge factor in my yelling, right? My, my frustration, my outburst, my not being able to contain my own emotions because I was so overwhelmed by everything going on around me. And so you start to see the strain it puts on those relationships. Our homes are supposed to be our sanctuaries, our havens, our areas of, of peace, our soft space for our family to come and land every day and escape the hectic world and have this nurturing environment to build us up and train up our children and strengthen our marriages and all of those wonderful, lovely things, but that can be really hard to do when you feel pressed to your max all the time. When you're tripping over the laundry, you're frustrated, you're trying to get a towel out and everything falls down and you can't find what you need or, you know, all those things that happen and you're just like, I can't take this anymore, right? And so when we start to realize the impact that this has, I think it helps us to look at our stuff in a much different light. Stuff is just that. It's stuff. Sure, there's things we use day in and day out. That's wonderful. They're tools. Stuff, inanimate objects need to go back to that, right? They're just stuff. They're just inanimate objects. They're not the people I'm pouring into. They're not the relationships that I'm cultivating. They're not the blessings of the Lord that I'm soaking up and giving him praise for each and every day. At the end of it all, we don't take it with us. So why are we carrying it around and letting it weigh us down and affect our relationships, our personal, you know, how we're treating people, how we're looking at life, how, how much we're soaking in each and every day? I really don't think that's fair to anyone, but it's not fair to us either.
Now there's many ways that we can work on this together as a family in our homes. I know when I first started kind of like realizing that I couldn't take all the stuff. I hated trying to keep up with it. Spaces are so much more difficult to clean when there's a million things shoved in there that you gotta sort through before you can't even clean a space. But I like having a clean and tidy home. I like not having to constantly be fussing with stuff. And I know that for me, my whole family wasn't on board when I first started this. I think my husband thought I was nuts. <laughs> he was like, I do not get it whatsoever. And of course the kids were like, what is wrong with you? You can't take away all this stuff. But it was so amazing that for our family, I started working on this for myself, right? I can't control anyone else. I can only control myself. And so I started working through this with my stuff and going, okay, I just want the essentials that I need in the kitchen. Everything else can go. I have a minimalist wardrobe for myself. I don't keep many toiletries and things like that. I use very, very basic, very, very simple things. I only have a few pairs of shoes. You know, I only keep a couple things and it's a lot easier to deal with. And then I started working with the kids and going through. You wanna cut sibling rivalry and bickering down to like nearly zero? Scale down the amount of stuff they have. When I first took away all of our kids' toys, then we went through periods where they keep a few items. Um, we, we've gone through kind of different variations depending on the season and what our family life kind of is in need of. But anytime I start to see these issues ramp up, it's usually because a lot of stuff has crept back in. And so going back and minimizing the space, which I am gonna be showing here this next week, what we're doing and how to declutter your bedroom, your closet, your bathroom, and the kids' rooms as well. So stay tuned. But the more I got rid of stuff, right? Anytime that creeps up, we cut some stuff out, we cull it down a little bit, and it is amazing the internal reset that is to our family. Going through and working on these spaces, right? And saying, all right, let's tackle this. Let's get through this. Let's reset our space. It is so wonderful to see everyone else start to get it. And they go, wow, there's not as much laundry, not as many dishes, not as much this, right? Chores are easier, things are simpler, and that leaves so much more time to go and enjoy the things that you want to be doing as a family. It's a lot easier to enjoy those beautiful, fun parts of life when you're not constantly bogged down by all the stuff. When our homes are clear, our minds can be too. And in that space, we can make room for more love, more peace, and more God. So let's lift our hands, not in frustration with the clutter, but in thanksgiving for what we're able to manage each day. And remember, at the end of the day, it's not about having a perfect home, but a space where love resides among the perfectly imperfect bits of life. Keep your head up high, sweet friend, and let's journey together one cleared countertop at a time. So friends, as you just saw, I have tackled the hallway. I went ahead and pulled all of our pictures down and I've got a fun little project that I'm going to do there to kind of have this special space. We got this really skinny, funky looking hallway, but to have a special space, a hallway of memories for our family. And I cannot wait to share that with you all. Hopefully I'll we'll have it done by the end of next week. So stay tuned, I'm working on it. But it was so wonderful to get everything cleared out of the space, to deep clean it all, to put back only the essentials, which for a hallway was like nothing, and then reassess everything that we had in that space. I truly hope that looking through these different topics, the true weight of clutter in our lives and the power that decluttering and having a simple home, a simple a minimal inventory of stuff that we're trying to juggle all day really does bring such a rich and rewarding life. And so hopefully this can be an encouragement to you and your family. Be sure, share this. If this can be a blessing to other sisters in Christ and friends and family, be sure to pass this along their way. And of course, come and join us down below so that you guys can get my booklet I've put together where I'm working through all of these steps. You can go ahead and watch this playlist right up here. This has all the videos collected of me going through these spaces, working through all of it, and truly, ah, it feels so good getting this done. So my house has lost so many pounds over the past few days. I am loving this and I'm going to go enjoy my day with my family. See you on the next one. Bye friends.